Welcome to the UCSC Arboretum and the Titan, uh, the Titan Arum or Amorphophallus Titanum, which is a tropical flowering plant of Southeast Asia, the island of Indonesia, Sumatra, um, Borneo, and that area. It's the same area as the orangutan. So the same habitat, lowland tropical rainforest. And this is emblematic of some of the unusual creatures that live in this forest which is currently being converted all into palm oil plantations. And so very, very threatened habitat, both for the mammals, the orangutans in particular, and for plants like this. And like the orangutans, these have very small populations. They don't grow in a big clump or a group. There'll be one here, one five miles away, and one 10 miles away that way. And so why do flowers happen in the first place? Um, it used to be spores jumped around and rode the rain or the wind and everybody's happy, but there wasn't much diversity. Having flowers, having sex, that is male and female, allows there to be greater diversity, especially when they pollinate and receive pollen from other plants. And so this has a very interesting mechanism so that it does not self-pollinate, even though it makes hundreds of male flowers and hundreds of female flowers. That um, upper right picture there, the yellow and the green, the yellow ones are the male flowers and the green ones are the female flowers. And so this grows for 10 years. Once a year, it makes one giant leaf. That guy there in the blue shirt, that's one leaf, not a tree. It's a single leaf coming off these bulbs. And the bulbs start out like a gladiolus bulb, like a corm like that from the seed a few years old. By that time, it's like this. We got one 10 years ago, like that. Every year, it puts on a few pounds. And now the bulb itself weighs 35 pounds. And it's the size of a wheel of cheese. And there's a picture of it over there. Uh, what happens then, it's building up reserves. It's building up reserves until one year, instead of just making one leaf, it says, this year I'm gonna bloom. So two weeks ago, we heard the uh, Titan is starting to swell. We're not sure if it's a leaf or a flower yet. And then a few days later, it's a flower, so everybody was going for service. It's like we've been trying to have a baby for 14 years, and all of a sudden, <laughs> it's, it's for real. Um, so, we moved it down here a week ago today, and set up the misters, and we put it outside. Uh, most of these are now in greenhouses. Um, all the big botanic gardens seem to have gotten them lately, and people are breeding them. And lest you ask, yes, we wanted to breed it, but it's a big, big convoluted deal to get the pollen from Chicago or from Huntington in L.A. They have it frozen, and they can send it to us, but it's a nightmare through FedEx. You have a 12-hour window, wow. 12 hours from that plant to this plant. So um, we have not bred it this year. If we have a little more lead time next time it blooms, I'll be able to get that together. And we could make hundreds, theoretically hundreds of seeds from those things. So what's with the stink? What's with the smell? Why is this all going on? The day it starts to bloom, the day the female flowers become receptive, the stink starts to emanate from pores down around the base of the plant. At the same time, the skirt has opened up and the spadix, this is the phallus part, starts to warm up. It's biothermal. That is on its own with a little chemical breakdown, it becomes 98.6 degrees, same as your body temperature. So there is in the soft jungle night and it's 65, 70 degrees, which is warm, but not chilly at all. But this temperature is 20, 30 degrees higher than the air around it. So it picks up that stench and brings it up to the canopy where it floats across the canopy of the trees and goes for miles and miles and miles. And every single insect, that, and there are many, um, so moths and beetles and especially flies like to lay their uh, eggs on, on rotting meat because there's a, a nutrient source for the entire life cycle if you just can get that thing on a, on a corpse somewhere. And so they call it the corpse flower because the predominant smell of the stench is rotted meat, but there's an overlayment of shit and, and dead fish and some other gross things that vomit. Um, it has a combination of chemicals that are just killer. And it does make people, some people sick. That's why we're, we're lucky that it's not inside a greenhouse here. We're outside so you can escape. Um, anyway, so that's the first night. The first night, the stink, the smell, the drama. It all come the insects, and they're all coming to the females. And we hope that some of them have visited other males that are, are blooming. Because here in this plant, one day, the females are already receptive for pollination for one day. The next day, they're done. Pollinated or not, they, they're done. Wow. And that day, the male flowers open and present their pollen with another little bit of stench and another little bit of heating, not as much as the first night. So the entire business takes 24 hours for the female flowers to born and die and the male flowers to open, pollinate, and die. So any insects that are lingering around from the first day will hopefully get up from this stupor 
and fly away and, and uh, find another one of these somewhere in the jungle. But that's the idea because these plants are so rare and distant, um, this is a very secure way of putting out that immense stench over the whole canopy. You can smell it for miles. You know, like when the wind is right in this roadkill somewhere, you can sometimes smell it for miles, like stones on a summer road. <laughs> Something in the farmyard that should have been buried a week ago. Anyway, it's it's a powerful, powerful scent. And sometimes people feel like it's on their skin. It's so powerful. Mm -hmm. And there are people who, who cast out or thrown out for whatever. Oh, so, it's worth it, though. It's like roadkill. you got to stop and see it. You can, you can, no matter how disgusting it is. So you look at this, this diagram here of the life cycle. So 10 years in the making, every year adding a little biomass to the bulb, then this final event in the last couple of weeks, it puts out this spike. This one is probably going to top out about here in a couple of days. The first night here, it grew six inches in one night. Um, there were a couple in Germany in a conservatory there last year that got to 12 feet tall. So it's almost three times the size of this. So it's one of the world's largest inflorescences. An inflorescence is a group of flowers together, like a pineapple, is a bunch of little individual flowers all squished together. And a strawberry, that's a hundred tiny flowers. Each one of those little seeds belongs to a separate flower. But they all ripen together and it becomes a single fruit. It's a compound fruit. It's a compound fruit. Yeah, a corn of cob. A cob of corn, a corn of cob. <laughs> you don't have to take this part. Every one, every one of those kernels is a separate flower and each one has a piece of silk that goes out. And when the tassels are ripe, the nail pollen rains down, but the tassels don't ripen until this nail pollen is all done. So they get pollinated by the neighbors. 